Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Bind, and my name is Dave, and this is a review of A War of Whispers. Shh. As a disclaimer, this is a review copy from Starling Games. I love you guys, you guys are awesome, and you've been sort of supporting the channel for a while now, and quite a bit, so. But it doesn't mean that this game gets a pass. I always evaluate these games, and they have to earn the right to be called Play It by Game Vine. So, A War of Whispers is not you going against an army uh, as a king and setting your guys and your pawns to kill each other. No, you are channeling your inner Littlefinger, or Varys, if you've watched uh, Game of Thrones, you're basically the right-hand man, and you're the advisor to a lot of, to all these kingdoms, and you want some to win more than others because you get more points if the bears win over the elephants, which elephants should win. I love elephants. And this is the deluxe version. It basically takes a lot of the cardboard bits and upgrades them, though it kind of, kind of teeters on what it it means to be called deluxe but i'll show you that right now in the production and then we'll get to my thoughts let's go okay so this is what you get in the box of the collector's edition now from what i can understand uh, there are a lot of cardboard little bits that get replaced so uh, you have these awesome little uh, components here these are soft kind of plastic I, I feel but they're all the same mold uh, it could have been different molds for different colors but that's fine they look really cool I love these little towers here as well but my favorite thing are these little tiny bits here that go into these brown stands they fit perfectly and they have all kinds of different colors because there are different army armies that you'll be participating with the cardboard components are good the cards are a nice nice linen finish they feel really good so it's like a deep linen finish very much appreciate it and then you have a lot of the cool art as well and you have uh, there's a metal coin yes and this is kind of oh there goes the box this is kind of cool that you have an hourglass i don't really pay much attention to timer glasses uh and games but when you put them in small plastic miniature form well you got me there so that's kind of interesting and then you have a circle board so now let me tell you how this game plays all right so this is the deluxe version setup you take these towers and farms and put them on the icons that are on the actual map you can see them there uh, I will say I like the circle map it's really big though the the art on it is it's okay sometimes it's kind of hard to see the farms on there and even the towers but everything's set up here some of the armies are on the map more so like the blue army of the bears have more army but they have um, less skills in other areas and the horses they're able to really move across the map but they don't have any armies out and some uh, the red army here they have control of some cities and so forth and so on you will start by giving everybody their um player sheet and they will shuffle up their little circle uh, chits here and these are the actual armies and they'll put them on here randomly this is how you will be scoring at the very end you will get one point per city that the army controls times the amount where it falls in line on your board here now these will be kept secret and if you ever do wind up swapping them during the swap phase you will have to flip them over so everyone will be knowing where what you're going after but you will be able to swap them out if that needs to happen now on your turn you're going to be putting out banners and um, then you'll be taking the actions this timer here uh, will be going around the circle and triggering these actions and that will happen four times after the fourth round whoever has the most points via cities and uh, their loyalties is the winner so starting with the first player they will take their banners and they'll place it on any one of the positions here and they'll place two in the first round and in the two player game you'll place three and then once that goes all the way around you will take one banner off and then you'll place two more and you'll continue to do that process as the rounds happen that was kind of weird so i wanted to point that out first 
Now the maps already has colors here and if they're outlined in the specific colors they are controlled by that army unless there is a different color army that has at least one banner in their area. That means they are controlled by the blue bears. Now how you're able to actually put out banners are the little special actions that you have here. So let me go down a little closer. So once you place a banner down here, you will execute it once the timer gets over to you and you'll do whatever it says. This says you'll put two banners out of the red. Now you can put those out anywhere um, the red is populated already or anywhere in their area, uh, area that isn't populated. Um, now in the areas, they can only hold four banners at the end of the rounds. Otherwise you have to dis uh, discard the other ban banners unless there's a farm in the area. And that means they can have six banners in one area. Now other things are like, um, you'll get as many banners as there are um, farms that you control and then there are ways that you can draw cards so every army has different cards and and they are asymmetric uh, like i said the horses like to get um, fast all over the map and you will draw these cards take them into your hand and different ones will do different things um let me go ahead and and the anatomy is like such so the icon up here means that's what you have to pay for it. So the first thing here, you can just play the card and pay the amount. But down here means you would have to pay two of these emblems, so you have to pay multiple cards to trigger the uh, second and third option. You would have to do a bear card and a red card here, they're eagles, in order to play this uh, mercenary kill three banners in one region. And you would just play it and kill all three of those banners, but you would have to get give up a bear card in addition to that. And the other icon is the attack. So, so basically you will just move another army into another spot, taking all the banners from one spot and then putting them, putting them down here. Now this is where the watchtowers come in. You will get plus one attack if you control it. So right here there are three points of yellow. And each banner will cancel each other out. So that essentially will cancel out these three here and they will all get discarded and then that leaves one blue to reign over this area. Now he has two blue points at the moment. So this right here, this yellow, if he, he were to come in here, he would just get discarded. But uh, if the red were to move into the blue area, these two would go away and nobody would have any banners here, but blue would still lay claim because he has the outline. Now the areas with cities, if you have the majority, you will put a little banner in the city. That means you have control of it. Remember, you get points at the end of the game based on how many cities the, you, the armies control and what your loyalties are. So we want the Eagles to have a lot of uh, cities controlled and right now it's looking pretty good for them. And so you'll essentially keep doing that. Like I said, there will be a point uh, at the round, at the end of every round, except for the fourth one, round, that you can swap your alliances if you want, but you do have to flip them over. You have to discount, uh, discard down to five cards at the end of every round. One thing I haven't mentioned is when you place a banner down here, you get to do this action. But if Orange were to place the banner right down here, he or she would get to do this action this action and this action in addition to the action at the very end now if he he or she placed it right here they would get to do these two actions but this one would be lost for everybody for this whole round so there are some kind of cutthroat um tactics when you're going through the and that's essentially it you just continue to do that for four rounds whoever has the most influence at the end of the game is the winner now let me tell you what i think about this game and give it a grade so that is how you play a war of whispers at least the basics um now this deluxe version does come with some event cards that didn't go over they just basically immediately trigger if you draw them but what does this get in a grade kind of sense well it gets an 82 for me which gets the game vine played award absolutely uh, but it does have a few hiccups now i like starling games a lot of their games there's very few that i'm like oh man i don't want to play and let, don't get me wrong i want to play this one i like it but i experience more hiccups or more times where it's just like me just sitting there kind of dull with this one then i did a lot of their games but that's just saying uh, Starling games because they have a lot of ones that I like 
this game over a lot of other kind of like risk because this is feel it feels like a risk variant that has this rondel it feels like a rondel around that you're going around um so it's like a a tiny little risk in the middle that you're executing these actions in this rondel format and you're undercutting people by trying to put your banners in front of other people and getting more actions and trying to uh, foresee what the best moves and actions to get the most out of your advising in the game so that's what it kind of feels like something that um is familiar but has a new kind of flair and like i said it's kind of teetering on deluxe there are a few things that just knock it over that line like the, the coins pretty cool the time little um time hourglass was cool the banners um are interesting and and the board is interesting but there's just a few things that you just like yeah this is this is a board game this is what most of them nowadays kind of look like so calling it collectors it's it just gets over the hump for that. So, and reading the rules, there was a few things, like I had to play one or two games to kind of get the hang of it, and you definitely have to play one or two games to know which factions or what uh, armies are best at doing what things. Uh, you can kind of go over them before you play, but you're really not gonna get a feel for how they operate until you actually play the game. So the first game is like, the first pancake it's going to be messy second pancake is going to be prettier just like this game play so uh, it has a few things that just didn't, that rubbed me the wrong way but overall i like this one and i am recommending this to people who like the kind of army influence pit all these guys against each other kind of games because it's very interesting to see these two six by six armies class into each other and just demolish each other and you want that because well you're rooting for the elephants to win and who cares about the the um, eagles and the bears they can kill each other all they want so it's, it's it's fascinating that you get to direct that um if you're able to do so just tactically which I, it's very interesting it's something unique that i haven't personally played but Again, it's, there was a few times where I, I just wasn't as engaged and by the time I turned, I came around, somebody had to nudge me and say, hey, it's your turn. So uh, take that for what it is. I do like the game. The production is decent and uh, I am recommending it overall. So thank you again, Starling Games, for uh, providing us with this review copy. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Fine Nation, for clicking like and subscribe. And if you want this game, it will be. And until next time that I see you, my name is Dave, and have a great rest of your day and a great time with all that you play. I'm out. Bye. Vine Nation, we love making content here for you on the channel, and we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, so subscribe now and help us out. This video right here, I think you'll like. This video right here, YouTube thinks you'll like. Or you can just sit here and watch me dance as a dinosaur for a little bit longer. You can visit us at our social media outlets, and we're going to be improving our Patreon here soon. That's all for today. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.